Welcome to the Extra Mile Podcast for bar exam takers. There are no traffic jams along the extra mile when you're studying for your bar exam. And now, your host, Jackson Mummy, owner of the Celebration Bar Review. Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to episode 251 of the Extra Mile Podcast for bar exam takers. This is your host, Jackson Mummy. I'm glad to be with you. Thanks for taking time out of your day to join me and to find out about all things bar exam related. We come to you regularly on Wednesday mornings with a weekly episode, and from time to time we do some bonus episodes, uh, particularly as bar results come out uh, throughout those seasons. So uh, we just finished a bonus episode last week about New York and Texas results. That was episode number 250. It's kind of hard for me to imagine. I've actually done 250 of these now. Uh, But in any event, um, we're glad that you're here today. Glad you found us. If this is your first time with us, uh, thanks very much for uh, being here. And if you're a a returning listener, we appreciate so much your continued uh, involvement and engagement with this podcast and letting your friends know. We've grown a lot over the years, and uh, I know that uh, it's because people tell their friends and acquaintances and associates about us. So thanks for that. Our podcasts are produced in a couple of different formats. Uh, We do both audio and video. If you prefer to watch the podcast, you can do that by going to celebrationbarreview.com forward slash 251. That's the episode number. And if you'd like to listen to the podcast, you can do that on Apple iTunes. And I encourage you to subscribe there so that you don't miss out on anything. Uh, But we're also on Spotify and iHeartRadio and lots of other places where podcasts are syndicated. And we've got all of our podcast episodes going back to episode number one on our website. Just click on the tab at the top of the page for podcasts, and you'll find all of the episodes along with the show notes. So there's a real treasure trove of information there. Well, in today's episode, we are going to be talking to a successful Alabama bar taker. Now, Alabama is part of the Uniform Bar Exam Administration, and uh, we had a great conversation recently uh, with a, uh, a woman who had taken the exam and failed by a single point. And I think sometimes we lose sight of the fact that those close failures are more devastating in many respects than the ones where you just miss by a mile. And what do you do? How do you put yourself back together and go after it and and make it happen? And uh, as you're going to hear in our interview with Tanya, um, she really relied on her family and her faith and her belief in what uh, she could do. She used the tools that we provided in our course uh, and had terrific success. And she found the point in a whole lot more uh, to pass the bar in February 2019. So I encourage you to stick around for that interview. It's really uh, uplifting and uh, inspiring, I think. Uh, Regardless of what your circumstance is, I think you'll find something in Tanya's story that you can probably relate to. Now, I know that for many of you, you're waiting for your results still to come in California or in Georgia, maybe some of the other UBE states. We are now getting to that point with New York and Texas having released their results, where more than half of the country now has their results. And we also know that this is a time, based on the statistics that we're seeing, that uh, we know there were more repeat bar takers than first-time takers across the country in February. And we also know that more people failed their bar exam than passed them, at least so far as we're coming across the country. I have no reason to believe California will do anything except tip that balance even more uh, in the uh, non-passing side of the ledger. Now, if you're one of those people and you're really frustrated and discouraged and angry, uh, I certainly understand. And we do have something to offer you specifically. This Thursday at 7 p.m., we're doing a a special training. It's 90 minutes long. It's called Do Something Different, Make the Next Bar Exam Your Last Bar Exam. It's completely free. And during this time, we're going to show you the steps that successful bar takers follow to go from failing to passing. Now, this is a great seminar, even if it's your first time taking the exam, but it's particularly relevant for those of you that are repeating and really feeling that frustration and discouragement that comes with the process. So I'd really want to invite you to join us. It's, as I say, completely free, but you do need to register. And you can do that by going to our website at celebrationbarreview.com slash webinar or by uh, clicking on the button here on the show notes page, either for video or audio, and we'll get you registered. And then Thursday night, 7 p.m. your time, uh, we'll have this uh, special training seminar. And I think it's uh, something you don't want to miss. We've helped thousands of people by going through this program, uh, and I'm confident that you can be one of those. So hope you'll join us for that. Go to celebrationbarreview.com slash webinar for all the details. 
All right. Well, I don't want you to have to wait any longer. We had a great interview with a wonderful uh, member of the Alabama Bar. Uh, and so let's uh, jump into our discussion with Tanya. Buddy, welcome back to Hanging Out with Successful Bar Exam Takers. And I'm excited today. We've got a new member of the Alabama Bar, Tanya McAlpin. Hey, Tanya, how are you? Great. How are you doing? Well, I'm excited, but I'm guessing that I'm not as excited as you are. Is that a fair statement? I believe so. Yeah, yeah. I saw a great picture of you celebrating your win uh, with your coworkers right after you'd gotten the results. Was that just at the very last, at the, at the moment that you had found out? It was not long after. I'd found out that morning and we were like, hey, let's grab lunch. And so everyone was there to celebrate with me. That's a pretty cool feeling, isn't it? It is, yes. Yeah. Well, I'd like to, to sort of circle back and have you tell our audience a little bit about your story because it was not necessarily an easy road for you and you had some moments of real frustration, I think, along the way. And I want to just let you kind of uh, back us up, tell us a little bit about your background, how you came to be in a position to take the Alabama UBE exam in February. Okay, sure. Um, I actually graduated from law school back in December of 2007. And so I then got married in February of 2008, um, came back from the honeymoon, went straight to set for the bar exam for three days. It was three days back then. Um, needless to say, I did not pass, not the best choice. Um, so then I sat for the bar again um, in 2009, um, did not pass. I missed it by a few points. And again in 2010. Um, so things happened. Um, had my daughter, uh, ended up working somewhere else um, that wasn't even law related. And so the door opened for me to get back in the legal field. Um, they were very supportive there at this law firm as far as helping me get back in to take the bar exam. A lot had changed, you know, in 10 years. Um, for one thing, using the laptop instead of handwriting answers. So that was all new and you helped me get acquainted with all of those things. Um, again, I had been out of it for 10 years. Um, actually, the law firm I worked for in 2008, my husband kind of joked saying that I should tell the attorney there um, if I ever see him again, yeah, you made me not want to be an attorney for about a decade. But <laughs> <laughs> so I got back into it. Um, you know, we all have those experiences and life happens. Um, needless to say, a lot happened during that time. So I could not have gotten back into it as easily as I did without the help of Celebration Bar Review. And um, again, the great people that I was working with, they were very supportive, gave me um, time and the means to do what I needed to do. Um, took it again July of 2018, missed it by one point. Yeah, I, I, want to to I want to stop you right yeah. there because that was a okay. horrible, horrible moment. And I know that, you know, we got those results. We saw those results in July of 2018 and it's heartbreaking. I mean, a point, just one lousy point. I mean, it, it, and I'm going to have you talk about it, but I just want to, I just want people to know that it does happen. I mean, people miss by a point. And how did, you re how did you deal with that? I mean, what was it like for you? It was excruciating. I could not believe it. Um, I had done everything, and I felt like I was better prepared than I had ever been those other times before. Even though I had been out of the legal field for 10 years and had not taken the bar exam in 10 years, I still felt um, better prepared than I'd ever felt because of Celebration Bar Review. I had the tools I needed before. It was just a lot of information and I didn't have it in a format where I can easily get my arms around it. And so I really had a good feeling and to find out that I had not passed was horrible enough, but then to actually get my score and see that I was just one point away, it was devastating. And so it made me rethink everything. Maybe this was it. Maybe I misunderstood. Maybe I'm not supposed to get back in the legal field. I really had to do some soul searching because I would thought, I just don't know that I can put myself through this again after all those years of waiting and then to miss it by one point. Um, it was tough. It was. Yeah. And, and I know there's a sign on the wall behind you that says, be still and know that I'm your God. And I know that your faith is a big part. Yeah, there you go. Um, your faith is a big part of who you are. 
And I know that when that one point score came back, you really started to question um, what what God's plan was in your life, right? I mean, that that was a moment of real Correct. kind of for you. Can you talk a little bit about that? I mean, people don't often talk about that, but I think it's I think it's pretty significant. Sure, sure. Um, you know, I was upset, um, but I still knew that God had a plan for me, and I, you know, prayed about it and felt like I did need to take the bar exam again, um, and that this wasn't the end. You know, it was not on my time. I mean, my plan for me was to pass the bar exam 11 years ago. <laughs> God's plan for me was to pass this time in 2019. Um, and so I got back into studying. It was hard. Um, at first, to be honest, I was going through the motions. I wasn't in it. I mean, I felt like I had been beat up. Um, so I just started going back through everything again and doing everything that I had done before and just building on kind of the foundation that had been laid from the past time of studying. And I did um, increase my practice scores. Um, and so I felt good about that. But of course, with the last situation, you know, I felt good. So this time, I mean, it was 50-50. I knew it could go either way just because I was so sure last time and then to miss it by a point. So, I mean, the feeling that I had when I found out, you know, I see the email come across and I see we are pleased to inform you and I just thought, oh, you know, this is not like it's ever started out before. But, of course, I had to keep going back to read. Maybe I misread it. You know, maybe I need to read it again. So then I sent it to my husband, make sure I'm reading this right. <laughs> And yeah. so we were actually in court that day and I'm handing files to my boss. And as I hand one to him, I'm like, I just passed, you know, it's so, <laughs> not something I could scream at the time, but definitely exciting. Well, we're going to let you scream before we're done on the video today. So <laughs> just, just prepare yourself for that. Um, so you you went up more than a point, right? Um, yes. On the bar. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, got the point I needed, and then some. <laughs> yeah, can you want to share with us your score? Sure. Um, I don't have it here with me, but I believe it was a two sixty six. So, um, yeah. you know, again, nothing extremely high, but I made it. Two sixty six. You're eligible for admission to twenty four states, so you could be a member <laughs> in New York big old New York and uh, New Jersey and DC and uh, Illinois and a whole bunch of places. So congratulations. That's a huge, huge jump. And I think, you know, I wanted to, to interview you because I think sometimes people uh, perceive, you know, it, it's one thing to talk about somebody who's gone through all the, the taking and not passing. And that's an extraordinary story when they pass and you have that story by itself, but to come really close and then not make it, I think, is a different kind of a problem that emotionally getting back in and starting your studies and just feeling like, is this ever going to happen for me? Probably had to be the biggest challenge you were facing. Is that true? It was definitely. Yeah. I'm and sure. Sorry, go ahead. No, I, I was just going to say, you know, the, at that moment, I think in some ways it's easier to fail by a lot and, and go back and do it than it is to come really close and then say, what in the world is going on here? Right. Um, and so mm -hmm. what was the reaction of your family at that point when you'd gotten that, that one point score? Um, how, what, what were they telling you at that stage? They were very supportive and encouraging saying, look, you've been out of this for 10 years. It's amazing. You've been out of it so long and this is your first time to take it in 10 years and you just miss it by a point and all you need is a point. And if you take it again, you're going to get it. And then some, and of course I appreciated everything that they were saying, but you know, you have that in the back of your mind, but what if I don't, you know? And so then I also had the doubt of, you know, would it be horrible if I took it again and I missed it by more than a point and went backwards, went the other way? But then, you know, those are just the things that creep in, you know, the doubt and the fear. And you just have to try to push that out and think positively. Yeah. And of course, you're working while you're studying and you've got a family. So you've got other commitments. Um, when you went back to study for the February exam, how many hours a week do you think you were studying during that period? It's hard to say um, because I would just study when I could at work and then when I got home. 
Um, so I want to say 20 to 40. I know that's a broad range. Um, yeah. It would just depend on the week, really. Yeah. And of course, you know, from the time the results come out, you only get about 90 days until the next bar exam. And it took you a little while to just kind of recover and, and pull back from that. So you really did this in something under three months to, to study, which is a pretty big task. That's a, that's a lot of work to do. Um, did you find yourself gaining momentum as you went along? I mean, did, did that sort of putting the old result behind you uh, begin to, to kind of happen for you as you were studying? It did. Um, at the beginning, I asked them to review the um, MBE score because I was praying that they, you know, found that other point and they didn't. And so once that was off the table, I knew I had to get back into studying. And like I said, I was kind of going through the motions at the beginning, but I did start picking up more momentum, um, you know, the further along that I got thinking, you know, I just need to build on what I did before. I can do this. And um, it was a, it was a good feeling. Yeah. Did you participate in the group coaching calls that we offered? I did not. Okay. Um, and were, you I just, group? were you on our Facebook group? Yeah. I was not. I do not have social media. Okay. So you were, you were totally out there working and just reading my emails, right? Correct. Okay. So what was that like? Did you feel isolated at all? Well, um, I would read the emails every day, so I did feel connected. Um, I would try to watch the podcast um, when I did, and so that definitely helped. Um, I could definitely see where the support would have helped more. Um, it was just, you know, more of a time restraint for me. Yeah, and I think, I, and I wanted to point that out because sometimes people feel like they have to be on social media or they have to do these other things. You didn't do any of that. You just followed the course. I mean, you did what we asked you to do and you watched the Q&A webinars, the podcasts. Um, I sent out emails and, and you were reading those. Uh, but the, the primary part of this for you was just following the, the study guide, right? It was doing the assignments. Here's the reading, here's Correct. the lecture, question practice, right? What about the, the writing style? Was it different than what you had done 10 years ago? Oh, definitely. <laughs> um, <you> know, <laughs> the videos you talk about, you know, the IRAC method, or all of that. Yes, yeah, definitely a different approach and it helped so much, yes. Yeah, and, and once you get the hang of it, it, it flows pretty naturally, doesn't it? It does. And I mean, I will say that that was actually my strong seat, you know, the uh, multi-state, not so much, but the essays and the MPTs, I seemed to do well on, um, and I did bring the scores up, you know, on that as well this time. Yeah. And you type the exam, which obviously makes a difference from handwriting, would you say? Oh, definitely. Yeah. You can get more words on the paper and you can organize them and work with them a little better. Um, how many how many essays do you think you practice going into the February exam? Do you have a sense of that? I know that I did more leading up to the July exam than I did the February exam, just because, like you said, I did not have as much study time during that time, the three months. So I try to build on the essays I've already written. Um, but I would say, um, you know, 100. Wow. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> you, were, you were industrious. I, I knew you were working away. Um, so what was it like to go back to the exam in February 2019? What's that feel like when you get to the exam site and the, the, the test room? Well, this time it was in a different location. Um, it was a smaller room. There were not as many of us there in February as had previously been there in July. And I was actually able to stay at the same hotel as the room where it was given this time. So that made things easier. Um, I could just go over to Skywalk and I was there. Um, I seemed to be more stressed and uptight and anxious in July because I did not know what to expect having been out of it so long. This time I did feel more at peace, more relaxed because I had been there and I knew more of what to expect. Um, and so, you know, I think that helped. 
not that I wanted to take it again, but I think it definitely was, you know, a positive this time. Yeah. Um, did you pretty much keep to yourself during the, the days of the exam? I did. Yeah. Uh, it, there's a lot of drama, isn't there, at the test? There is. You have the groups, you know, of people talking and walking around. And I just, yeah, I kept to myself and I had little snacks in my room that I could go eat. So I wouldn't have to waste time trying to figure out what I was going to eat. And I didn't know if I'd have a microwave or a refrigerator. So it was just like little cans of tuna or chicken salad. I could go eat and study and look over my notes and then go back. So yeah, yeah, That's not exercising. That's good. So after the exam was over, while you're waiting for results, what's your thought process at that point? Did you feel like, hey, I think I, I did it this time, or were you still sort of un uncertain? I felt like I did well. Um, and I tried to stay positive. I did have a piece. I felt like I did it. Um, but as and I tried to just kind of put it out of my mind, honestly, until it got closer. And of course, you know, you get a week out from results coming in and you start thinking about it more and stressing and you're a little bit more anxious. And so definitely started praying more that week um, as I was thinking about it, just trying to keep a peace and not be as anxious. Um, and, you know, on Thursday, I was definitely in prayer all day, all night. I was up early Friday morning, kind of counting down, you know, it's an hour, two hours. You know. And so then getting the email, um, I just forwarded it to my husband. I couldn't talk. I was in court. He was at work. He thought that I would not answer the phone because I didn't want to talk to him. He thought it was bad news. So he didn't really know I had passed until he actually read the email. At first, he thought it was a bad email. I was just forwarding because I didn't want to talk. <laughs> he had forgotten that I was going to be in court. So, I mean, everyone's just been so excited for me because they've been my support system and my encouragement. I mean, I could not have done it without my church family, my family, my friends, my coworkers. Um, they were all just as excited for me as I was and ready to celebrate. And they know it's been a long journey. You know, it's been hanging over my head all of these years. And it's just a really nice feeling to have the burden lifted and to not have to worry about it anymore, to have it behind me. Yeah. You know, our, our slogan, our, our saying here is, I have my life back. And so one of the things that we like to do when I do these interviews is to sort of Dave Ramsey style. Uh, I, I like to count down and let you uh, yell that as loud as you'd like. I have my life back because I think it's kind of a good moment of closure. So if you're willing to be a good sport, I'm going to count it down and I'm going to let you yell it. Okay. All right. You ready? Okay. okay. Oh, shake it out. I'm ready. ready? All right. Three, I'm ready. two, I have I'm my back. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. What a great feeling, isn't it? I mean, you know, you, 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 in some ways you had your bar life on hold for more than a decade. And uh, what an incredible moment when you kind of say, you know what, I get it back. It's, it's mine. Um, just so excited about that for you. Um, so what does the future hold for you? What are you going to do now that you're a member of the bar? Well, I'm going to the admission ceremony next month. I'm really excited about that. I'm going to, you know, have my family down so they can share in that. Um, I will be working at the same firm I've been working at. The only difference is now I can do it, you know, under my name instead of someone else's. And so, um, you know, before I just kept trying to remember, you know, my identity is not in the bar. It's not, doesn't define who I am. Um, I really had to come to terms with that the week leading up when I was praying, you know, either way, it's going to be okay. You know, I've made it this long, I'll continue, there's a plan. Um, but I am thankful that the plan was for me to pass this time and excited to have that. Again, you know, it doesn't change who I am or anything about me. Um, it was just a personal goal that I'm glad that I have finally achieved and can move forward. Yeah. You know, uh, we, we have a strong faith, my wife and I, uh, and, and we think that a lot of times we get put in people's lives to help them overcome this particular moment in their life. How did you find out about Celebration Bar Review? Do you remember? I do. I was actually at a firm meeting and there was um, 
someone in another office associated with our firm at a different location. And she was telling me that she was going to be taking the bar exam. And this would have been February of 2018. She was going to be sitting for it in July. And she told me about Celebration Bar Review. And I said, oh, that's great. And she showed me on her phone, the website. And so I looked it up and I was like, this is what I need, you know, because before I had felt so scattered and um, there was just so much material. And so I was thinking this is an answered prayer. And it was definitely, I could not have done it without you. Thank you so much. Oh, well, it's our pleasure. We're, we're just so excited and proud of you. I, I think in many ways, someone who has to come back from a near miss has a bigger challenge than somebody that fails by <laughs> lot. And so what you did was really, truly remarkable and a great accomplishment. I'm sure um, you, you've got children, right? Yes, sir. I do. And how, how old are they? Seven. She's seven. seven. She's in the first. She's seven year. years old. Okay. So she kind of knows that it's a big deal, right? That mom passed, mom passed a big test, right? So yeah, some, she said she still doesn't know what I do, but she's excited that I got the point that I needed. <laughs> there you go. So a few years from now, you can let her watch this interview and she'll know it even more. But you know, you've got a real, you've modeled for her a lot of things here, I'm sure. One of which is faith and confidence and, and knowing what's important in life, but also persistence and the willingness to, to really be obedient and faithful to what you think your calling is. And I'm not sure there's any greater message we can give our kids there. No, that's it. That is definitely. Yeah, well, I know she's proud of you. Your husband's proud of you. Your whole family, I'm sure, is just excited. And we're, we're thrilled that we could share this story with our audience. I know that, that a lot of people will be um, really encouraged and inspired by what you have to say. Do you have any uh, words of advice for people? Uh, now, now that you know everything that's happened, you've had the experience, what would you tell somebody who's in a similar situation? I would say that when you're in it, it is harder because you're not on the other side and you can't see that that's coming. Um, when you're in it, you're thinking this could go on forever. You know, should I keep putting myself through this? Um, and I know everyone has a different plan, but I would just say, you know, if you're sure that that's what you are supposed to do, that's your calling, you're passionate about it. Don't give up. Keep pressing forward. Um, you know, just hang in there. It's more of a mental battle, um, emotional as well. Um, you do get knocked down. It's hard to get back up. I'm not going to say it's easy. Um, you know, it was, it took a lot. Um, but you know, the saying, fake it till you make it, just keep going through the motions until you get there. And then it's a great feeling once you are on the other side. So. That's great. Well, Tanya, thank you so much for sharing your story with us. And uh, we look forward to great things for you. I uh, hope you'll stay in touch and let us know how things are going. And uh, again, congratulations from all of us at Celebration Bar Review. It's a great story and a great accomplishment. And we are so very proud of you and, and pleased for you. So thanks to everybody for watching. Hope this has uh, been as inspiring and encouraging to you as I felt today. And uh, we will see you all again uh, in the near future with another interview. Thanks, everybody. Well, that's our interview and our podcast for this week. I hope you enjoyed uh, the conversation with Tanya and you found uh, some things to give you hope and encouragement. Uh, whether you passed or, or whether you failed by a point or you failed by 20 points, uh, it's still a long road back, but it can be done. And we'd love to show you how to do that. We'll have more uh, uh, case studies from people like Tanya uh, coming up in our Thursday uh, seminar. Uh, do something different. Make the next bar exam your last bar exam. You can register by going to celebrationbarreview.com slash webinar or just clicking on the button here on the uh, show notes page. And then we'll see you Thursday at 7 p.m. Well, that's it for this week. I'll be back next week with some more great interviews. We're having great conversations with passing students around the country. We'll keep you up to date on any significant uh, exam results that come out in the next week or so. The next thing we'll be looking for will be California and Georgia results in the middle of May. So uh, good luck to those of you still waiting for results. And uh, for everyone else, we'll see you along the extra mile. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Extra Mile Podcast for bar exam takers at www.celebrationbarreview.com.